This is Wade Wilson aka Deadpool, one of the most famous characters in Marvel Universe who was a regular guy with normal abilities. At some point he access to this powerful regeneration ability that helps him recover from almost any physical injury. This transition is very important because our tissues can regenerate after a serious injury. Instead, our body fills the wound with a specific tissue which we call a scar. The nature of scars and normal tissues is entirely different. They lack appropriate physical and mechanical strength and elasticity, which cause a lot of complications. Their existence can lower the quality of life and in some cases they lead to death. But we saw this transition before during evolution in different species. Lower vertebrates such as fishes and amphibians can completely regenerate many tissues. Even they can completely regenerate some of their organs like their limbs, heart, or even their brain. Still, it remains unexplained why humans and mammals tend to imperfect healing and scarring rather than regeneration. I'm not just talking about the physical injury to our skin, but our internal organs can be damaged for different reasons like viral infections. We can also see this transition in amphibians when they start to grow and change, they lose their regeneration. Even humans' fetuses have this powerful scarless healing, but we lose it after we grow. One component that links these three together is the immune system, but how our immune system can control the scarring and regeneration in our body. If somehow our cells die, like you cut yourself with a rusty nail or virus or bacteria infect and kill our cells, our immune system kicks in and takes control of everything going to happen next. Generally, it has two different types of armies that consist of specialized soldiers. The innate immune army is the first line of defense and responds to every pathogen the same way. Another army is our adaptive immune system which is the second line of defense and brings specialized tactics to the war against the specific enemies. At the same time, the wound should be repaired. And for doing that, the cells that died here should be replaced with new cells. We know that our specialized cells don't divide to make more cells, they can't just do that. Instead, most of our tissue have a niche for stem cells that can create a lineage of cells relevant to that tissue. If they are somehow activated with the specialized signals, they can come and regenerate this area. But there is another cell, which we call fibroblasts, can be activated instead. They produce this glue-like substance that we call ECM to the wound site, which in our eyes, it is the scar tissue. Depending on which immune cells are activated and which signals they produce, they can activate our tissue stem cells to start regeneration, or the fibroblast can be activated and make a scar tissue. Our immune system is so complex that we don't know most of its details. So it is a very difficult task to understand the whole story behind the regeneration. But every immune cell and its signals play important and complex roles. Since it's so complicated, I can cover them in just one video. I have to simplify and focus on one factor at a time. I'm gonna make a series of videos and talk about every tiny details. But now, for this video, we can mention general factors that can change the course of our healing factor. In normal condition, our tissue resident immune cells guarding our tissues. After an injury, the damaged cells scream for help by releasing danger signals to the environment. Resident immune cells sense these signals by specific receptors on the surface. Then, they call for backups by a series of pro-inflammatory signals. We call them pro-inflammatory because they attract more immune cells and increase inflammation in the wound. Other immune cells, by receiving them, immediately come to find the invaders. Controlling some of these signals can reduce the scar tissue in the wound site. For example, one of them is interleukin-1. Recent studies showed that disruption of the interleukin-1 signaling pathway significantly reduces scar tissue in the heart. After calling for backups by resident immune cells, the first immune cells that show up in the first hours are neutrophils. They furiously start killing bacteria and pathogens by eating them or killing them directly with toxins. The role of neutrophils is vastly unknown and traditionally, we thought that they are indiscriminate killers and they cause collateral tissue damage before dying. But our views are changing as we study them more. Now we know the other side of the characters that help resolution of inflammation and they contribute to tissue repair with different strategies, which is the story for another time. After a few hours, macrophages become the dominant immune cells in the wound. Like neutrophils, they are attracted by pro-inflammatory signals, which are released by resident immune cells. Macrophages can catch pathogens with their hands and eat them, and they clear the war zone from the dead cells. They are one of the most important immune cells in tissue regeneration. Macrophages have different groups with different characters that traditionally we call M1 or M2 macrophages. 
M1 macrophages increase inflammation by releasing pro-inflammatory signals and activating the adaptive immune system. But the M2 macrophages can have anti-inflammatory roles and encourage tissue repair by activation of stem cells. Until now, we only talk about our innate immune system, but our immune sophistication is related to our adaptive immune system, which mainly consists of two different cells, B cells and T cells. This immune system creates immunological memory for specific pathogens, so we can fight countless new bacteria and viruses such as influenza and coronavirus. But it is tempting to think that maybe we gain our adaptive immune system at the cost of our regenerative ability. Because organisms that have great regenerative ability consider immune deficient since they have a poor pro-inflammatory response and adaptive immune cell diversity. In addition, similar situations are happens in frogs when they change from larvae to adult frogs. Adult frogs have a very sophisticated adaptive immune system, which is similar to our immune system and can protect them from viruses that are extremely fatal to the salamander, which has a poor adaptive immune system. But at the same time, they lose their regenerative ability with the improvement of their adaptive immune system. It is estimated that scar tissue or fibrosis contributes to 45% of all deaths in the developed countries. We tried a lot of different ways from injecting the stem cells into our body or making an artificial stem cell niche with biomaterials to increase our regeneration. But they haven't been very efficient. But we know that a remarkable number of immune cells and immune modulators participate in all phases of the tissue healing process. So I think controlling the immune system is a very good strategy to promote tissue regeneration. But these mechanisms are so complex and vastly unknown. But eventually, we'll get there.